you might have come across people trying to sell you detox teas or different detox diets and uh, they say that you need to detox all the time. Yes, it is true that we are living in a modern world full of different toxins and environmental pollutants and we do probably need to detoxify ourselves more thoroughly and more on a more regular basis. But what about sweating? Does sweating help with detox? Check out this video about how saunas and heat affect detoxification processes. The liver is the primary detoxification organ that removes pathogens, heavy metals and environmental toxins. Heavy metal toxicity can reduce immune function, cause autoimmunity, hypersensitivities and other health problems. It has been shown that human fat contains many synthetic chemicals and persistent organic pollutants or POPs. People think that the liver is the place that contains all the toxins, but it's actually the adipose tissue. The liver is just the conductor of detoxification pathways, but it doesn't store toxins the same way as fat does. That's why people may experience these detoxification symptoms like nausea, lethargy and brain fog whenever they lose weight or burn fat while fasting. Here are the most relevant detoxification pathways in the body regulated by the liver. Glutathione is the body's main antioxidant produced in the liver. It protects against free radicals, heavy metals and oxidative stress. Compared to other antioxidants like vitamin C, the body regulates glutathione based on necessity and coordinates it with the immune system. NRF2 is a transcription factor that regulates antioxidant pathways such as glutathione, NADPH, thyroidoxin and others. Autophagy is the process of cellular turnover. It is involved in the elimination of infectious particles, broken cell particles and dysfunctional organelles. Losing fat itself or having a liver isn't going to guarantee that you eliminate all these toxins because if you release them from the adipose tissue, from the fat stores into the bloodstream, then you can just mobilize them and you can still reabsorb those same toxins without burning them off or without excreting them. So it actually, it is important to also make sure that you not only mobilize those toxins, but you also excrete them. Fortunately, you can eliminate toxins via sweat. A 2012 study found that induced sweating appears to be a potential method for elimination of many toxic elements from the human body. Sweating has been used to treat uremia or the accumulation of toxins in the blood of kidney disease patients. Humans sweat for thermoregulation, but it apparently also helps to excrete different substances. We do lose minerals like sodium, potassium and magnesium through sweat, as well as other trace metals like nickel, iron, zinc and lead. Sauna therapy has been shown to eliminate heavy metals like arsenic, cadmium, lead and mercury, as well as POPs. Infrared or steam saunas help with the elimination of phthalates, flame retardants, BPA, pesticides and PCBs. The Hubbard protocol combines sauna, exercise and niacin to eliminate POPs. Studies find heat-induced sweating reduces POPs by 25-30% in fat tissue and blood. Even 9-11 first responders and Gulf War veterans exposed to fumes have seen improvements in respiratory symptoms with the sauna. In addition to sweating, saunas and this hyperthermic conditioning affects detoxification pathways in other ways as well. Saunas trigger heat shock proteins that promote autophagy and repair misfolded proteins. Hypothermia and fever also induce heat shock proteins that inhibit viral replication and reduce pro-inflammatory cytokines. Saunas strengthen the immune system by increasing white blood cell count. Saunas can improve toxic and induced health problems because of stimulating the lymphatic system and flushing out the toxins. Heat exposure is known for increasing nitric oxide or NO. NO is a transient gas and signaling molecule that supports cardiovascular function and blood flow. It can support the mobilization and excretion of various substances during sweating. Heat shock induces antioxidant defenses such as peroxyredoxin, glutathione and glucose 6-phosphate. You can also create hypothermia and sweating with exercise. Physical exercise raises heat shock proteins and promotes detox pathways like glutathione, autophagy and NRF2. Wow! Taking a regular sauna is one of the best things for your health and uh, it also ha has a pretty profound effect on keeping your system clean, so to say, and supporting these detoxification pathways. But it doesn't mean that you have to take a sauna. Any form of sweating is going to have a similar effect, like you can sweat with exercise or you can sweat through other means and that will help to excrete some of the toxins. Uh, but the heat from the sauna is going to have like a, some additional effect, but at the same time, like you can also experience hyperthermia and heat shock proteins with exercise, so both work, so you should probably do both. To prevent detox symptoms, you can also take some binders that will bind to the toxins, like activated charcoal, spirulina, bitter herbs, green tea and milk thistle. 
If you want to know how to take the sauna and other similar activities, then check out my new book, Stronger by Stress. But on that, thanks for watching the video. Make sure to click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay clean, stay empowered.